The surveillance footage you're watching right now is of Nicola Priest and her three-year-old daughter, Kaylee Jade, on August 8th, 2020. They both appear to look normal and healthy, Kaylee Jade following her mother around and even pressing the buttons on the elevator. Just a few hours later, though, Nicola Priest would call 999 from her flat in Solihull, United Kingdom, in a panic. She told dispatchers that she woke up to find her three-year-old daughter was unresponsive and that she needed help and a paramedic right away. Medics were at the Kinghurst house development pretty quickly, but it was already too late. Little Kaylee Jade Priest had already passed away. Nicola would insist to officers that she was devastated over her daughter's death and that she had nothing to do with it. But the series of truths that would follow Kaylee Jade's discovery would not only end in this mother of two in prison, but the story that would shock and horrify all of UK. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about Nicola Priest and her poor daughter, Kaylee Jade. I have nothing else to say for the intro. Let's get right into it. First, we're going to rewind for just a moment. 22-year-old Nicola Priest moved in with her boyfriend at Kinghurst House in mid-2019. She already had Kaylee Jade and was about to welcome her second baby with this boyfriend. After the baby was born, though, their relationship ended and this boyfriend moved out of the flat. But Nicola decided to stay at the flat and Kaylee Jade stayed with her. The exact timeline is unclear, but it was around this time that Nicola's own mother, Debbie Windmill, called social services on her own daughter because she had concerns about the household and the way Nicola was treating her granddaughter. Later in court, experts would also say that Nicola had a quote-unquote very low intelligence. Take that however you'd like. So I think that was a concern for Nicola's mom as well. But also the flat was just very dirty and unkept. And it was particularly concerning that Kaylee Jade's room had no lights, no curtains, and no proper carpet, which I don't know exactly what that means, but I assume it just means that there wasn't a carpet like actually installed in the room that maybe she had a rug or just a piece of carpet that didn't actually go to the edges of the room. Anytime somebody came into the flat, Nicola would be sure to tell them that she was in the middle of redecorating in order to explain away why the flat looked so disheveled and why Kaylee Jade's room looked so incomplete. There was at least one home visit by social services, but when they checked out the place, they didn't cite Nicola for anything. And I mean, the flat looked a little grungy and a little unkept, but nothing looked outright suspicious, at least to them. But things kept getting worse. Neighbors would report hearing strange and concerning things coming from Nicola and Kaylee Jade's unit in the months leading up to Kaylee Jade's death. Nicola would call her a quote unquote brat. She would also just ignore Kaylee Jade and go out and smoke and would leave Kaylee Jade in a soiled diaper on purpose. The neighbors below on one occasion would say that they heard a loud banging sound coming from their apartment. After the banging sound, they heard the sounds of Kaylee Jade crying. And then Nicola allegedly saying, quote unquote, I'll just say she fell off the bed. They allegedly also heard her shout things to Kaylee Jade like, quote, shut up, go away or leave me alone. I'm going to pause here to just spew my opinion for a second. Like I get it. I get that we're programmed to mind our own business. I know especially in a lot of societies, people are kind of like encouraged to mind their own business, not to stare at people. And if something is going on, not to say anything, because again, we either assume somebody's already taking care of it or we just don't want to get involved. It makes us nervous. It makes us nervous because if we were wrong, then we're going to be embarrassed, that kind of stuff. I get it. But also, if you're hearing these kinds of things coming from a neighbor, 
maybe don't do nothing. I know that CPS was kind of useless in this case anyway, but perhaps if several people were speaking up, they would have removed Kaylee Jade from the home or somebody would have figured out that something bad was happening. Good PSA, I live by this rule and I've been living by this rule for many years that I never assume somebody is already taking care of it, whatever it may be. I'd rather speak up and be wrong than stay silent and become regretful. I know it wasn't the neighbor's fault that this happened to Kaylee Jade, but it's just very, very sad to me that so many witnesses could hear so many concerning things and not say anything until it was too late. Okay, anyway, Nicola around this time had a new boyfriend named Colm Redfern. On July 24th, 2020, she had apparently texted Colm, I'm gonna kill her, dot, 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 because she keeps leaving the living room or going in the kitchen. So I've paled, which means hit her. I've paled her one and smacked her for shitting her nappy. A nappy, if you're American, means a diaper. In response, Callum writes, good, give her one from me. And Nicola replies to that, I will, babe. Then apparently three days after that text exchange, Callum, the boyfriend texts Nicola the following. I'm going to keep the little brat away from me. Dot, dot, dot. Sick of your spunking daughter. And just a few days later after these text conversations on August 9th, 2020, Kaylee Jade would be dead. We will talk about Kaylee Jade's actual death and what possibly happened to her in a little bit. Before being arrested, but after her daughter died, Nicola would continue to post on social media. She was apparently obsessed with taking selfies and loved posting on TikTok and other platforms. After Kaylee J had passed away, she posted several posts with slideshows of photos of her and captions like, I miss you, RIP my baby. I'll show some screenshots here, but they're of course deleted now. So we only have what people had recorded from back then. She posted a video about a week after Kaylee Jade's death, lip syncing from the song To My Parents by Anna Klendeling, mouthing the words, I should have done better. I'm sorry, mom and dad. And then, a little while after this, she goes back to just posting dancing videos, dancing to hip hop and rap. In September of that year, the next month, she had a video showing off new makeup that she had just bought. Nicola Priest and her boyfriend, Colm Redfern, were both finally arrested under suspicion for having something to do with Kaylee Jade's death. Both of them pled not guilty and therefore both of them ended up going to trial and things got way more complicated. At the trial, Nicola and Colm would just blame each other for Kaylee Jade's death. Here's where I'm going to tell you what happened to her, or at least the few details that we do know, because it's honestly still pretty fuzzy. After they came home, so after the CCTV footage that you saw at the beginning of this, Colm comes over to their flat to visit Nicola. Nicola puts Kaylee J to bed around 7 p.m., and her and Colm then go to Nicola's bedroom to have sex. However, while they're having sex, Kaylee Jade, you know, being a three-year-old toddler, she wasn't tired and she kept getting out of bed. She wanted to stay up and play and didn't want to sleep. Very normal for a three-year-old. Nicola and Colin became enraged that Kaylee Jade was uh, interrupting them. And that's about all we know. That was on August 8th. And the next thing that's abundantly clear is that Nicola calls 999, UK's emergency number on August 9th, the next day around 11 a.m. So she passed out and went to sleep and didn't check on her daughter until 11 a.m. Didn't matter because Kaylee Jade had already passed away. All we know is that either one of them or both of them, like maybe they took turns, we don't know, beat Kaylee Jade severely that night. We don't know who did what or the timeline of events or who imposed what injury or which one of them imposed the fatal injury. What we do know is that Kaylee Jade was so injured at one point in the night that it caused her to start vomiting 
all over her room. And Nicola and Colm, one of them changed her bed sheets for her because she had vomited all over the room, which is really confusing to me that they're willing to physically injure her that much, but still change her bedding and her clothes. Like even though they were the ones that caused the vomiting in the first place, like they don't want her to be dirty, but they're willing to physically injure her so terribly is very confusing to me, but I'm sure it's just like abuser mentality. We'll never know, you know? Anyway, those details are important for what happens at the trial because like I said, Nicola just blamed Colm for everything and Colm blamed Nicola for everything. They both were saying they weren't involved in beating Kaylee Jade and that they had nothing to do with it and it was the other one. We know that Nicola was very low intelligence according to the experts and some people said that Colm was the more dominant partner in the relationship kind of implied, although I don't know this for sure, that like it wasn't until he was in the picture that Nicola became like outwardly abusive to Kaylee Jade and that the physical abuse kind of started after he uh, like soiled her mind about how much he didn't like somebody that wasn't his child and stuff like that. Very weird. But Colm's dad came to his defense and claimed that his son was quote unquote like a kid himself and believed that he wouldn't have done any of this if it wasn't for Nicola and acted like Nicola persuaded him to do all this and that he just got wrapped up in Nicola's crap, which like I certainly don't think Nicola's innocent, but I kind of have a hard time believing that personally. It seems like it was both of them. What I'm not going to do in this video is go into gruesome details about Kaylee Jade's autopsy. The details are online if you want to know them, but they're just like super horrible. I'd probably talk about it if it was adult, but because she was just a baby pretty much, like I just can't. I don't want to talk about all the like specific injuries. It's this video is triggering enough. What I will say though, I'll give you general statements. They found 68 injuries on her total. Some of them were new and some of them were old. And she essentially looked like the victim of a car accident, similar to someone who had been hit by a car going 40 miles an hour. So most of the injuries were recent and were suspected to be from the night that Kaylee Jade was killed. But some of them were weeks or even months old. All of that is important because Nicola and Colm were eventually cleared of murder charges. They didn't get charged for Kaylee Jade's murder at all. I know that sounds absolutely bonkers. That sounds wild to anybody. But remember, the trial was extremely complicated. Like I said, the two just continued to blame each other. There was no other witnesses in the house to really know what happened that night. And it was essentially impossible to prove that murder was the intention. It was also impossible to prove if one of them was the murderer and one of them was just a bystander or an accomplice and witnessed it but didn't actually do anything like if they can't prove that they risk I think my understanding is that they risk a mistrial or they risk them getting off completely or getting a much lower sentence if they can't prove it definitively and if they're just going to point the finger at each other like that's why they threw out murder charges it made the case in the trial so messy plus Often, the logic was physical abusers will often think that since the person they're abusing recovered from previous injuries, that they will surely recover from this one too. Even if their abuse is escalating, they will often just assume that the person will recover since they have before. And they kind of get this weird mentality that the person is like invincible or something like that. And so again, it is believed that that was the intention of Nicola and Colin that night. Whoever did what, regardless of that, they didn't actually go into her room with the intention of killing her. However, they did have the intention of severely injuring her, obviously. Me personally, this is so confusing for me, but I'm also, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. I've never been on a jury. So like, what do I know? But what's confusing for me about that is that those text messages that they sent where they were literally talking about killing Kaylee Jade and how happy they were about hitting her. It's very confusing to me that she can threaten to kill her daughter in a text message 
long before days before she actually died and how that wouldn't then be considered premeditated murder that's very confusing to me that part is confusing but like I said it's more complicated than that and I believe they just didn't want to risk a mistrial is what I maybe that's just what I like to think anyway they did obviously have the intention of severely injuring her though so instead both Colum and Nicola were both charged and convicted of manslaughter. So even though they couldn't prove that the intention was murder, they could at least prove that she died as a result of their actions, basically. Colin was given a measly 14 years for these manslaughter charges. Nicola was given 15 years for manslaughter, but she was given an additional three years for a separate charge that she was convicted of, which was cruelty to a child. Again, she was charged for this because they found old wounds on Kaylee Jade's body, and that would have pretty much only been the person that was living with Kaylee Jade, which would have been Nicola. And so they charged her with that as well. However, her three years, she's serving concurrently with her 15 years, which again, what is the point? Can a lawyer please explain to me what the point of being charged? Like maybe it'll help the parole board not let her get out on parole later or something. But honestly, like what is the point of serving concurrently? What's the point at all if it doesn't extend your sentence? That's so weird to me. But neither of them will be eligible for parole until they serve at least two thirds of their sentence. I hope they get denied parole completely and have to serve the whole thing because I personally think they should both be in jail for life. But that's just me. The Probably the saddest part about all of this is that Nicola could have saved her daughter if she had bothered to call 999 after the attack rather than just going to bed and waiting until morning because Kayla Jade probably could have been rescued. And if she had, then she could have been taken away and her life would have been saved altogether. Obviously, it's not surprising that she didn't do this, though, as uh, Nicola clearly showed absolutely no regard for her daughter's life. So I'm not sure why she would do that, but... Yeah. So now think back to the CCTV footage that we saw earlier and how normal it looks. But if you watch it again, knowing what we know now, it's actually very disturbing and tragic. Kaylee Jade is looking at her mother a couple times throughout the footage as if to try to get any sort of attention or engagement from her, from her mother, her caregiver. And in the same footage, Nicola doesn't look at her daughter once, touch her once, talk to her. What she is doing is looking at her own reflection, checking her phone, and actually walking around as if Kaylee Jade doesn't even exist. In my own personal opinion, Nicola was not a grieving mother, even though she tried to paint herself as that on social media after her daughter died. I don't think she was truly remorseful or ever shed tears for her daughter. I think the only tears she shed were for herself because she got caught. This case makes me so unbelievably sad I think because of Nicola's mom specifically, because her own mom was very, very worried about Kaylee Jade, knew that Nicola was not taking good care of her and tried to call somebody to get help. And if somebody had stepped in and CPS had like done their job, Kaylee Jade might have been able to be placed with her grandma instead because her grandma seemed to actually want her and her life would have been spared. Killers also, after killing, like just continuing to post on TikTok and social media as if nothing happened or as if they're just so sad and grieving is just an extra level of mental gymnastics that my brain can't even get near. It's just bizarre. Anyway, okay, that's going to be it for the story of poor little Kaylee Jade. Yeah, like the video to support the channel. But again, like I totally understand not just because the story is so hard. It feels weird to like a video that talks about it. I just want to let you all know that my new podcast is out with my friend Mickey Atkins. So I will have that linked down below and I'll try to put a card up here, up here. 
somewhere. You'll see a card up there as well to click on if you're interested in listening to me talk about more fun and lighthearted stuff with a good friend who's also a YouTuber. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks so much to all of our patrons, especially our top tiers, Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L., Little Kittlecat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Brittany Phillips, Willow Winchester, Bambi, Momo Neon, Philip J, Marita 144, Sage K, Elderly Hipster, Reese Rolls, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Toby, Carter, Kawakan Anime and Gaming Convention, Sonder, Sarah the Crazy Fish Lady, Blood for the Koi, Larkrar, Maxi, Ashley Danielle, Ellison Luna, Julieta, CC Picard, Sophia Wood, A Bunny Apparently, Leon Vanek, Destiny Riley, Literally Lacey, Elliot Fink, I Am In Your Walls, Habromania, Cyberdog Investigations, LLC, Vicky Cat, Amy B, Tick Urch, MX Carmelia, Cami J, Dead Without the E, Ball, Olivezilla, Chara, and our newest OEMRJ.